Hello there, this is Pastor Jeff, and I'm here to do the confirmation teaching slash sermon from Wednesday, which would have been January 31st. We started a new series called One Step, and this is week one. The bottom line for today was, where can you move towards justice? Good evening. Tonight, we kick off a new series. It's called One Step, and I think it has the potential to change the way we see ourselves others, and the role that we play in this world. Before we get into it, I want to ask you a question. Do you know somebody who's run a marathon? I don't know about you, but me running a full 26.2 miles doesn't sound fun at all. Honestly, even walking 26.2 miles doesn't sound that great. Yet, there is something inside me that goes, I would like to attempt that especially when I see the DC ads and the pulse. If you know someone who has done it, then you probably know how much work they put into getting there. You can't just show up on race day with no training, no plan, and no endurance to run the race. To successfully run a race like that, you have to prepare. You have to train, you have to stay strong, and you have to be brave enough to keep going. Because that's how marathons are run, by putting one foot in front of the other over and over and over again, one step at a time. While we aren't training for a marathon together over the next four weeks, we are going to talk about parts of our lives that take a lot of strength, a lot of endurance, and a lot of courage. It's something that requires us to take one step at a time to move towards a better tomorrow. And that is the work to see justice in this world. Now, before we go any further, let's make sure that we are all on the same page. Justice means something is right, fair, or equal. When we talk about justice, we're talking about moving towards a world where there are better for everyone. We're talking about working against injustice, which is when things are unfair, unequal, or not right in the world. Now, for some of us, the conversation about justice and injustice isn't new. Injustice is something some of us have experienced, whether it's related to race, disability, neurodiversity, based on what you have or don't have, and maybe something else altogether. Injustice and the need for justice is something that's a big part of the world around us. But for others of you, this may be a different way of seeing things. Of course, you recognize things in this world can be unfair, wrong, or difficult. And when you see or even experience things like that, you probably feel pretty awful, right? That sinking feeling in your stomach, the anger that makes you want to tighten your fists, the frustration that leaves you defeated. Those are all signs that something you've seen or experienced isn't right. Just an hour ago, I came from a DC DEI meeting, and there are things that we are struggling with as accounting. And I want you to think of a personal experience where you felt there was an injustice in your life or you were cheated out of something or missed an opportunity. In our community, there are individuals who have had to give up some of the things they enjoyed because a family member lost their job. The unhoused population in our county is growing and individuals are treated differently because of their race. The feelings that you experience in those responses are all signals that you recognize injustice happening to you or around you. They're all signals calling somebody, anybody, to take one step towards justice. Do you know that you have the potential to do something about the hurts the wrongs and unfair things that you see or experience in the world around you. So here's the good news. We aren't the first people 
to need a little help, opening our eyes for the need for justice in the world. I think that's part of the reason that Jesus made a habit of pointing out things that people hadn't seen or noticed before. So much of his ministry on earth was about helping people see the world through his eyes. Our teaching scripture tonight highlighted this truth. Jesus was trying to help those who were listening understand that part of following him means seeing and caring about the injustice in the world. To do that, Jesus compared righteous people to unrighteous people. Now, when we talk about righteous people, we're talking about people who do good and want to help others. But unrighteous people, well, they'll do the opposite. With that in mind, look at what Jesus said. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by the Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of this world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or need clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? What in the world was Jesus talking about here? Look at how Jesus answered. The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did to me. Did you catch that? Jesus was saying that the righteous people see and look for ways to fight for justice around them. They care about the least of these, which are those who need the most help. They recognize when these are need and need help. They recognize when someone is hungry in person and sick or left out. They see the injustice in the way that people are treated and they care for. Why? Because in caring for those people are treated, they care. And why? Because in caring for those who are being treated as less than or left out, they're showing that they care about what God cares about. They're showing they love the people that God loves. Jesus was reminding us that his followers are called to look for people who need the most help, feel the most pain, and get the worst treatment. We all want a better tomorrow, right? We all want the wrongs we see to be made right. We want things to be fair, good, and equal. We want justice, and God wants that too. And it starts with just one step, or in our case, one question. Where can you move towards justice? The truth is that injustice is happening around us all the time. I know for many of you, the injustice is even happening to you. No matter what our circumstances, we're all in the position to take one step towards justice both for ourselves and for the people around us. And that first step may be simply following Jesus' lead to open our eyes and see the wrongs for what they are, injustice. So where can you move towards justice? The answer will be different for each of us, and that's okay. To start, I want to give you a few steps so you can take to move towards justice right now, small step. Maybe today you need to start by taking just one small step in the direction of justice. For you, that might mean opening your eyes to see the injustices around you for the first time or in a new way. Don't turn your head or close your eyes. Instead, ask God to give you eyes to see and hearts to face the reality that there may be more injustices happening in the world 
than you even realize. Next step. Take time this week to consider what injustices you're witnessing or experiencing and come up with a few next steps that you can take to help move towards justice in those areas. When you recognize a wrong, what's one thing that you can do right now to help make it right? Do you need to speak up or step in? The big step. Think about the practical things that you know you can do to move towards justice. Challenge yourself to do it. Take a big step toward a better tomorrow for the people who need it. I do believe that each one of us could take enough steps together to move towards justice. So as you depart from this holy space, I'm encouraging us all to consider our one step this week by asking the following question. Where can you move towards justice? Amen.